All right, thank you so much. So, Okwi is an experienced data scientist and machine learning engineer. He enjoyed exploring machine learning to solve modern problems as demonstrated in his career choices. Okwi is a versatile individual open to exploring various fields in engineering and artificial intelligence, particularly in natural language, image, and sonar processing. He currently leads the AI efforts at Lobby AI. So all the AI thing that you're seeing in Lobby is the one leading the team. Okwi, over to you. Um, hi, guys. Can you hear and see me? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, fine. So, um, good evening, guys. I assume everybody here is joining from Nigeria. So, good evening. Um, okay, for bandwidth purpose, let me turn off my video. All right, um, good evening, everyone. <clears throat> so, my name is Okwi Waduka, and I'm essentially going to be speaking on um how you can position yourself as a data scientist um without further ado let's begin so i'd like you to please confirm if you can see my screen yes we can all right so um hi everyone welcome to an info session on how to um best position yourself as a data scientist or position yourself um, for a uh, data science career basically um i think it's, it's germane to note that this info session is uh the, the presentation i'm about to do is targeted at um, people who are data science enthusiasts um, who are ai enthusiasts people who don't know so much about the field so it's very low level um, so that um, we can accommodate everyone. So I won't be talking about anything that is going to be too strange to um, anyone on the call, right? Um, okay, so um, as um, Aziz said, I'm the lead data scientist at Lobby AI. Um, I essentially lead the AI efforts at Lobby AI. Um, so features such as Jabari, which you must have heard of, um, the AI interviewer, um, the uh, JD Builder, um essentially um i led the the team or teams that uh built um these features for lobby um okay so uh in this presentation we're going to be talking about a few things we're going to start with what data science is and then we're going to talk about um something pretty interesting right so it's like everyone is asking oh how is chat gpt able to um, respond to you or chat to you, chat with you like a human being. How is um, Dali able to generate images? How is Lalal.ai um, able to uh, do some musical stuff like uh, separate uh, tracks, musical tracks, right? So it's like if, if you, well, we'll talk about that. Then um, why AI? Like, why should you even get into the AI field in the first place? And if at all you're convinced by topic three, we will then move to topic four. That's how you can get started. Then five, how you can stay relevant before we would um have our Q and A session. So um moving on. So what is data science? Right. I know it's confusing sometimes. You hear the um as long as a data scientist. You hear, oh, I'm an AI engineer, machine learning engineer. So what exactly is data science? Everything that has to do with the collection of data, analysis of data, and interpre interpretation of data is data science. Um, when you hear things like exploratory analysis, predictive analysis, that is data science, right? And this is a field that helps businesses to make decisions, to identify trends, and also to um, make predictions. And... This is a field that is deeply rooted in mathematics, statistics, and programming. Okay. And now in the next uh, slide, you will see where I have, um, this is not a Venn diagram. I don't know what to call it, right? But you can see that data science is the overarching field or discipline when it comes to data. So when you're talking about data analysis, you're talking about machine learning, you're talking about AI, right? Data science is the umbrella right above all of these things 
And then artificial intelligence, as it stands today, right, is um, a subset of data science. I say as it stands today because we have uh, multiple, um, okay, great. So we have like multiple AI techniques, some of which are not uh, data science related. Some techniques that were uh, brought about in the 40s, 50s, 60s, right? So that's why I say as of today, because as of today, AI is data focused, <clears throat> right? So actual intelligence is basically just um, any form of technology that allows machines to make decisions, right? And then in artificial intelligence, we have a technique called machine learning, which you must have heard of, right? These are algorithms that um, that make use of self-learning models, right? Models that learn without you needing to explicitly code um, or, or, or program certain things, right? So basically algorithms that help machines improve through you understand know, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and whatnot. Right. And um here we, we see like a, a deeper circle. So inside artificial intelligence, as we saw, we have machine learning. And inside machine learning, we have deep learning, where you have your neural networks, you have your uh, convolutional neural networks, recurring neural networks, uh, uh and, and so on and so forth. Uh and transformers, by the way. And just so you know. ChatGPT is built with a neural network architecture, right? Uh, the name of the architecture is called a transformer, but we won't get into that because this is just basics, right? And famous examples of um, applications that we know, uh, top one here, as you can see, ChatGPT, the king of them all, the most popular of them all, um, for text generation, um, as it stands, also image generation, um, and OpenAI will soon be releasing a model called Sora, which can do video generation. I don't know how soon they release it because a competitor called Kling just uh, released something very massive. So OpenAI is probably doing some <clears throat> underground work right now. Then Lumen5, that helps with video uh, generation and image generation. Then Lalal.ai, that um, helps. Uh, so if, if you have a song, right? Like, let's say, yeah, if you have a song, and you pass it to lalao.ai. It would use AI technology to extract the drums, extract the keyboard, extract the guitar, extract the vocals, like extract as many individual parts as it can, right? Um, using AI technology. So um, that is that is um, what lalao.ai um, does. So now we're going to play a little game here, right? Um, and we're going to use ourselves, right? That's us in this call, we're about how many now? 20 people. So 20 of us are going to use this game to understand how AI algorithms work, right? And how they, how they become so intelligent, right? And I put here that they actually learn the way we do, right? They learn exactly like humans. So uh, let's do something. So. Um, before we start our game, right, um, I have here that human beings learn in two ways, by instruction and by experience. We'll, we'll get to the experience bit a bit more and also the instruction bit. So let's, let's just go ahead and begin, right? So um, by instruction, um, why didn't we use swear words as children, right? It's because we're instructed to. Don't say the F word. Don't say the this one word. Don't say that one word. You get because we're instructed to. That's how you learned not to do that. Or um, before you cross the road, look left, look right, and look left again. Why do we do that? Because we were instructed to. Computers learn through instruction, which is one of the ways with, in which they learn is through instruction, right? So we'll get into um the computer aspect of it, but as human beings. We learn through instruction. Computers also learn through instruction. And then the experience part of it, let's play our game, right? Um, so I would like to see in the chat box if if you guys are familiar with the car logos that you'd be seeing. And this would be in three stages. And this is just to show us that um, we learn certain things by experience. There are some car logos you see here and based on your experience on the road, right? You'd be able to say, ah, this car logo is for this particular car brand, right? 
and uh, we're, we're going to play that game and we'll tie it back to um, how AI is being taught or how AI learns. So for level one, in the chat box, can anybody tell me what these three logos are? It's pretty easy, really. You see these logos all the time. Let's try the first one. Let's try the first one. I'm sure almost every house in Nigeria has a car with this logo, with the very first logo. So we have Honda. Okay, someone said Honda. Honda is the second one. Okay. Okay, Toyota, Honda. That's from Amina. Yeah. Okay, good. So uh, Lobby AI has said Toyota, Honda, and Volkswagen. It's not Volkswagen. It's, it's, uh, it's actually pronounced Volkswagen. So, yeah. So we have the three of them. That's good. So by experience, you guys know these three. Let's see level two, right? If you guys will know this one. I don't know if you see these cars a lot in uh, on Nigerian roads, right? So what's the first one? What's the second one? What's the third one? The first one is Lexus. Okay, Innocent is correct with that. Oh, I mean, I also said that, so correct. Okay, Ismail said the three of them. So it's Lexus, Lamborghini, and Mazda. That's very true and very correct. So Ismail, uh, nice one. And then for level three, in fact, these cars, you, you see the first, you see three of them on, uh, at least in Lagos, you see three of them. Second one, not as often, but oh, every once in a while. Now, these ones you hardly see, at least in Lagos. I live in Lagos. So what's the first, what's the second, what's the third? Okay, Tesla, I've seen Chevrolet. Well, this is Chevrolet, but it's not Chevrolet. So that's, that's, that's one and a half. I'll say one and a half. This this Chevrolet car is a specific car. You you don't see the Chevrolet logo on, on that car. So yeah, Tesla is correct. Yeah, everybody that's saying Tesla um is correct with that. But the second one is Chevrolet, but it's not exactly any Chevrolet. You see it on only one type of Chevrolet. Okay. Should I should I give those? It seems you guys have tapped out. So the first one is actually Tesla. The second one is a Corvette. Chevrolet Corvette. It's only on Corvettes that you see these. And I've seen a Corvette only once in Lagos. And then the third one is Dodge. The third one is Dodge. So what does this teach us? It teaches us, it teaches us that we learn from experience, right? Because we see um the toyota logo everywhere exactly like the dodge challenger as Cyril said Be because we see the toyota logo everywhere through experience we can tell oh this is a toyota car this is a toyota logo same with honda same with volkswagen and then level two same thing right we probably might not see lamborghini everywhere but on social media we see it a lot so from experience we can tell that this is the lamborghini logo mazda and then lexus but because these other car brands are not as popular here in Africa or Nigeria, um, we, we might not know them because we don't have experience with them. And so I say this to say that AI learns the same way. In terms of instructions, AI learns through heuristics, actual commands, just like um, a robot. If you're telling a robot or if you don't want a robot to get uh, uh injured or damaged right you tell it when you're like you, you give it an ultrasonic sensor and you say okay when you're two meters away from a wall turn left or turn right that's heuristics but it has learnt that it should not hit a wall head on when it sees a wall it should turn either to the left or to the right and then also by experience through supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning when you expose AI to certain images, right, it learns those images and then it can classify them for you. That is supervised learning, right? Unsupervised learning means um, either dimensionality reduction or clustering or whatnot. That's some other topic. And then reinforcement learning, right? Having the AI learn from its mistakes. 
by either penalizing it or rewarding it, right? If you're using ChatGPT, you you would see sometimes that they will write that they're they're using your responses or they're using your prompts to train their AI. Why? Because they wanted to have more experience with human text. They wanted to to see what a human can type, the kind of things a human would say, so that it would learn from that and mimic that. Do you get? So it's the same way we learn from experience that AI learns from experience. And now we're going to talk about why AI, right? I mean, um, why are we having this webinar in the first place? Why should you even consider a career path in AI? Hello. I can't seem to hear the speaker again. Okay, let me let me quickly reach out to him. We are so sorry about that. Sorry, what happened? We lost you for about one minute. Oh, my apology, my apology. Sorry, let me quickly reshare. I apologize. Can you guys see my screen now? Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. At what point did you lose me? What was the last thing I said? Sorry, before I, I got cut off. Okay, chat someone says. Oh yes. Um sorry. Like, can I just be reminded like at what point you lost me so that I can just kick off from there? <laughs> We're talking about why AI. Okay, okay. All right. So I was saying that, um, well, first thing, because there's a lot of job opportunities. In fact, there's a shortage of qualified candidates for the number of roles, right? Um, for the number of roles available, right? So um, I was saying that we have five reasons. I have five reasons here, two here, and then three in the next slide. So the first reason is because there's a lot of job opportunities, right? A lot of job opportunities. And then being a part of AI gives you the opportunity, gives you the, the leverage to be able to drive the future, right? I was saying that AI is, in fact, not the future. It is the now. It is the present, right? So being in the AI space gives you the opportunity to drive the future. It gives you the opportunity to be a part of the future, right? To, to be a, a, a player, a major player in the future. And then also because... Data science, AI, they give you diverse exposure. Being a data scientist, right? You That's tend okay. to work on, yes? Was someone asking something? Okay. All right. So as I was saying, being a data scientist or AI, AI engineer allows you to work on a variety of projects. You work with people from different walks of uh, of life, people from different disciplines, because you can choose to work on projects like renewable energy, traffic optimization, food production, fluid dynamics, even fashion, right? Even um, whatever it is, right? You, 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 you tend to, because every field, every discipline needs AI, right? At this point in time, AI is like the new form of computing. Right, everybody needs AI, so you you have the opportunity to work in various fields and not restrict yourself to just one line of thought or one discipline. Then, um, number four, being a data scientist gives you the opportunity to work remotely. Right, um, with the tools and technologies available now, you're able to work from home, and a lot of companies allow data scientists to work from home. And then number five, there's good pay. I wrote here that graduates of a master, the master's program in data science at the um, University of San Francisco are said to make a median salary of $125,000, right? Within three months of finishing the program. Definitely this figure will be a lot lower if you're working here in Nigeria, but it will be a lot higher than a lot of people in other fields, 
right, or in other disciplines, because data scientists are, um, data scientists are, are, are respected, right, in every company, in every um, discipline, basically. So how can you start learning to be a data scientist? First things first, math is your friend. Math is your friend. Be very close with math, right? Data scientists, sorry, data science is a field that rides on the back of numbers. Statistics is key to understanding machine learning techniques, right? Because we use concepts such as mean, percentage error, median mode, and so on and so forth, right? So you need to know math. You need to know some math. You, you don't need to be a uh, calculus genius or whatever, but you need to know some math because you need math to be able to understand a lot of the results that you're going to be getting, right? Second thing is do not shy away from programming. There are two programming languages that are sort of uh, in the spotlight now for data science. That's Python and R, right? So I'll say, go ahead and learn one of them, right? Be an expert at one of them, right? Study that study one language and learn the ecosystem, like its ecosystem of data science tools, right? How it manipulates numbers, how it manipulates spreadsheets, how you're able to um do machine learning with any of these languages. Go and learn to pro to code in either Python or R. If you can learn to code in both of them, that is wonderful, right? So don't shy away from programming. Number three, take up courses, take up projects and free internships, right? We have a lot of courses on YouTube, Data Camp, Udemy, Data School, Springboard, and so on, right? The good thing about these is that they offer structured content, chronological content. They're not going to expose you to level three stuff, then level one stuff, then level four stuff, then level two stuff. They're going to go level one, to level two, to level three, like that, right? So patronize some of these uh, places, some of these uh, services, right? And do courses. Then also be ready to do so, get your hands dirty, do some dirty work, practice. Get yourself familiar with data sets, databases, data wrangling and whatnot. And you do that by taking on internships, right? By taking up projects on cargo and whatnot. Right. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not going to say anything very special on like how to tune your resume and whatnot, because that's very generic. I mean, every field requires you to every everybody requires that you have a, a, a good resume. Right. So it's not exclusive to data science. But however, what concerns data science is your ability to take up projects, your GitHub, populate it with projects. And I'm not just saying copy someone else's code and put it there. I'm saying um, you, you might even do like a walkthrough video on, on YouTube. See how people are doing projects end to end to end, how they are going from defining the problem statement down to even deploying on Azure, on AWS, on Google Cloud, right? Um, do the work. Why? Because that's the only way you can learn. That's the only way you can gain tangible experience. All right. Now, how do you stay relevant in this field, right? The first thing I'm about to say might not sit well with a lot of people, but you have to read research papers. Machine learning, data science, AI, these are research heavy fields, right? The chat GPT that you're using right now is riding on the, on the back of years of research. Research from professors in Stanford, professors in MIT and whatnot, right? Most of the um, data scientists in OpenAI, most of the data scientists in Tesla, in Apple, in Facebook, they are actually professors, right? They are actually acad academicians, right? They are, they are academic people. So you have to read papers. That's the only way you can stay up to date with the latest technology in machine learning or data science, right? I'm um, also notice how I'm using the terms interchangeably because that's how it is in the industry. And then interact with other data scientists, learn what they've been up to, your social media feed, um, get to know what, what people are working on, on LinkedIn, get to know the projects that people are working on, get to know, um, get to know what people have been up to, right? Connect with people, um, 
I don't say stalk people, but at least the, the famous guys uh, like Jan Lekun, don't stalk them, but like follow them. And that's that's the that's the best word. Follow them, follow their work, follow their research. That's the best, one of the best ways to stay relevant because you, you tend to see uh the latest developments, you tend to see the latest technologies, you tend to see tools that people are building, you tend to even see how to build your own tools for your own problems, right? So connect and um get to know what people are doing, then innovate, bring your fresh ideas. ChatGPT, they've come up with their own for text generation for various fields. You can come up with your own stuff, right? Um, as far as I know, I don't know of any tool that can um use AI to visualize what a house will look like before architects work on it. That is without the use of like Revit and whatever it is that um architects use, right? Probably with the 2D plans, you submit it to the AI and it's able to bring the house out for you, that sort of thing. That's an innovation, right? You can do it, market it, sell it, and be relevant in the AI space. That being said, I want to say a very big thank you for your audience. And I want to ask if we have any questions. Uh, so Aziz, probably handle the um, Q&A session. All right, thank you so much. I'm clapping. <laughs> Amazing. That's so detailed. So please, if you have a question or if you'd like to speak, kindly let us know. Thank you, Ridwan. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm going to... Yeah, you can go ahead, Rocky. Okay. Uh, please, sir. Uh, thank you so much for sparing your time to share your experience and this uh, uh, impressive uh, uh, knowledge with us. Uh, my name is Rakib Akwambi. So I have two questions for you, sir. And the first one is that for someone that wants to learn more about how GitHub works, how to uh, upload our file and uh, code on GitHub, how can we learn it so that we can be able to understand the whole ecosystem? That is my number one question. And secondly, is that I said, Having this knowledge and uh, having nice certification in data science, how can we be able to use to maximize to to make money, like to get job and secure opportunity in data science? Thank you so much. Okay, um, very relevant questions. For your first question, I'll answer it, but I'll be a bit more generic. When it comes to learning anything, and not just GitHub, right? Um. Nothing should be ever so far from you to learn, right? Because uh, you shouldn't even have to go the route of sacrificing so much money to learn. There's YouTube. If you want to learn how GitHub works, there are multiple courses on YouTube where you can learn everything you need to know about GitHub, right? Even on Udemy, you can learn all of that. I would like to say, I would like to mention, right? I'm the lead data scientist in Lobby AI today. However, Right. Uh, I have, yes, a few years of experience running, but everything I learned in data science, I learned online. Right. All the certifications I have online, right, with little to no cost. Right. Take courses on Coursera. Right. Apply for financial aid. Take courses on YouTube. Practice what you've learned. Work on projects. Right. And then when it comes to the monetary aspect of it, work on your resume. Right on your resume, when you have projects, when you have experience, hardly would any reasonable um CEO or HR turn you down, right? Except they are probably not hiring from Nigeria. But when they see that experience, when they see that uh, uh this guy has worked on some of the stuff that we're trying to build in this company, or this guy has worked on similar projects, this guy has a lot of experience. Oh, his GitHub has this and that. Oh, he has worked on end-to-end -end machine learning problems. Wow. So that means when he's coming to this company, he's a self-starter. We don't have to take him through rigorous trainings anymore. That's it. Your resume says that about you. You're good to go. You get your job. You make your money. Um, I hope I've been able to answer you, Rocky. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. All right. The next person can go ahead, please. Okay, if, if no one is going, I would like to take some of the questions in the chat. Um, so, so I'll be taking them um, probably one by one. 
um uh okay so these are just commendations thank you guys thank you thank you very much for the um commendations um kelvin asks um if we must have experience in data analysis before delving in data science i don't think so um because in in learning data science you would you will learn data analysis right you, you might not learn like uh data analytics uh, all these like tableau uh power bi and the rest that that might not be in the course material but everything regarding data analysis how to explore data, especially on Python, and get insights, get patterns, get trends, right? This is part of the data science package. Like I said, data science is the overarching discipline for anything data related, right? Anything data related. So um, you don't have to have um, experience in data analysis. When I started out, I didn't have experience in data analysis, right? I was coding Python, but for something else. So um, delving into data science, I didn't have any experience in data analysis, but there I am today. Okay. Um, your question is regards to SQL. Is it also a core required tool? Well, uh, it is. I will agree that it is. Uh, remember I said that um, data science has to do with collection of data, analysis of data, blah, blah. SQL helps you to actually collect that data from a database somewhere. So yes, it is an important uh, tool. I didn't talk about it because um, it will be talking about like a niche and I wanted to be general. It's an important tool. Yeah, probably learn it. Um, if you're taking any courses, it will, it will most likely be part of the course material, right? So um, yes, it's an important tool. Not just SQL, but we have some other query, lang query languages for um, other types of databases, right? Like uh, NoSQL databases, uh, for unstructured data and stuff like that. Yes, learn stuff like that. Learn certain query languages for um for for relevant projects, right? That's it. Read one is saying um my question is what is the best way to get started with data science? Is it a good idea to get started with Excel first or learn the R and Python? Um, so in that case, I would say probably learn Excel a bit, but don't waste so much time on that. I would only say learn Excel so you know how to manipulate spreadsheets, right? Uh, but don't waste so much, like don't waste up to two weeks on that because it's not it's not so, uh, learning it is not so consequential to your progress as a data scientist, right? I would say learning Python is a bit more consequential. So I would, I, I'm only saying learn Excel because, I mean, if you don't know how to use Excel ordinarily, if you don't know the basics of Excel, I think you probably need to learn the basics of Excel, but um, not so much as to be an expert in it. Learning Python is the very first thing you should be doing um, if you already know Excel, and then uh, probably doing a course on data science after you've learned Python. Okay, then where can you get internships? There are a bunch of them. Um, I know there's Hamoy, H-A-M-O-Y-E, and so many others. If you go on LinkedIn as well, you see a, a couple of companies um, willing to recruit interns. Um, even here at Lobby, right, you can apply for a data science internship. Um, usually the requirement is that you know Python, but it's an internship. We don't expect you to know everything or to have done everything, right? So you can apply and learn on the job, that sort of thing. So um, that's for the internships. As for projects, YouTube, the courses you do would usually come with end-to-end -end projects. So that is also um, a way to, to get projects. Then Cyril also asks, at what point of the learning phase do you feel can apply for jobs? I'll say that's up to you whenever you feel comfortable to, whenever you feel like you're strong enough, whenever you feel like um, you have enough on your resume to, to, to tell your story and your story is uh, good enough for a human resource manager to um, consider. And then what certifications do you need to get? You really don't need certifications, but for the sake of it, I had certifications on Coursera, Introduction to machine learning, introduction to data science, stuff like that, just to show that you've done those courses. Uh, it says there are so many data science courses on YouTube. Is overwhelming. What's a concise platform you recommend? I still con I still recommend YouTube. I still recommend Udemy. I still recommend Udacity. I still recommend Data Camp. The same ones on the slide. So um, pick a course. You're you're definitely going to learn something from it. Check check out the the curriculum. Right. One thing I like to do is you could go on, on on LinkedIn, see what companies require from people, 
and then see what those courses are teaching. So if those courses are teaching things in line with the requirements, then you know that these courses are good courses, right? So I, I think that's probably like a rule of thumb you can use. Um, the average timeline to learn, it depends on, on you. I feel everybody learns differently. I personally, I learn very quickly. So um, I, I can't say for everybody, but it depends on you. You set your timeline for yourself and no pressure. It's better to learn well than to learn fast. Uh, are you receiving certificates for this? I don't have an answer for that. Link for internship, my LinkedIn and number if possible. I'll leave that as is. And then how can we apply for Lobby AI internship? Um, whenever the, the job posting comes up, you can always apply. Um, I don't know when next we're going to be hiring, but I know that I think that we might be. I don't know, but um, look out for the job postings on LinkedIn. Um, also look out for the lobby themselves. Like visit the lobby page, um, frequently to see the, um, to see the opportunities that come up and see if um the internships are, uh, a part of that. So I I believe I've answered everybody on the chat. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you so much. So and um, another way is to, like. Yeah, as you are keeping engaging on our pages, you can comment, like, once you get notice, that can even give you an edge to others because you're already following the page, you already know what we are posting, we already know what we are, what information we are sharing. And in addition to what Oku said is, before you can go for any paid course, make sure that that information is no longer online or just have to like pay for it. Everything is on YouTube, then me, that's the, any any like learning platform. You can just make sure you go there, learn. You're going to definitely get one thing or the other from it. So I think we've come to the end of the event. And please, I would like you to appreciate the speaker with your favorite emoji. I'm going to count one, to three. After that, you can just drop it. You just drop that once. So just get it ready. One, two, three. Thank you guys, thank you guys, thank you so much. All right, we are going to be having it in our next event. I don't know when, but I'm still looking forward to probably organize a boot camp so that we can give out certification because I heard someone is saying, if there will be a certificate or that, I'm going to talk with the team and see what we can do about that. So thank you guys for joining us.